Hi guys, welcome to lecture zero for MSC 6765. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this equation. It, uh, at, at first glance, it doesn't seem like it has anything to do with uh, mechanical behavior of materials, but we'll be using linear algebra, um, tensor representations, and uh, a lot of things that start from here. And over a couple years of teaching this, I've learned that a lot of students haven't had any good linear algebra experience. So I want to talk just a couple minutes on how I think about this equation, how I interpret this equation. Um, of course, we know, right, if A is a, that's a screwed up looking M, M by N matrix, X is going to be an N by one vector, and B is going to be an M by one vector. So here we have M equations and N unknowns, but that doesn't, um, that doesn't help us understand any physical significance of what's going on here. Um, and the way in that, uh, you know, you, even if you had linear algebra, the way you learned about matrix multiplication and all this, it, it's, not, it's not always the most helpful. So I want to go back, and I want you, whenever you're thinking through this course, Whenever you see a matrix equation or a tensor equation, we'll talk about tensors in an upcoming lecture, um, I want you to replace this in your head with the idea of a mapping. And in particular, we're thinking of a, a linear mapping. Right? In the case of this matrix uh, product, we are mapping vector x onto vector b. And A is the matrix that describes that map. Um, and so what, what can you do with the linear transform? There's a, there's a couple uh, really important types of mappings that I want you to, uh, to be familiar with. And I'll pull up my notes. But the first one is a... A rotation. Right? We map a square onto a rotated square. Right? And in that case, our, uh, if we rotate by an angle theta, Our, our matrix looks like that. All right, let me grab my notes so I don't forget. Accidentally leave something out. Oh, and you know what? I was thinking coordinate transformation. Dummy. Okay. Rotation matrix. We'll talk about how coordinate transformations are the transpose of, of, of rotations uh, <coughs> coming up soon. But rotation matrix... Uh, looks like this. Um, we have another mapping. Right? And if this is vector uh, x, we can have a reflection. Right? And the reflection about the y-axis, right, is going to uh, look like this. All of the y values keep the same, but the x is switched over to negative x. So that's uh, reflection against y, reflection uh, against or across x is 
trivial. Right. So then we have other <coughs> important mappings. And so then, oh, we get rid of this word rotation here. The other, the next one is scaling. Right? So if I take this and I scale it by a factor of two in all directions, right? That just looks like that. <coughs> right? I can also don't have to scale these proportionately, right? I could go from this rectangle or that square to this rectangle, in which case I might have something that looks like this, where I've stretched it in three by a factor of three this way and kept it the same dimensions. Right. Other important ones that are going to be useful to understand in this class, right, is a a shearing transformation, right? We take our our cube and shear it, right? And Right. So if we if we take a look at this and if we consider a vector along the x axis what happens to it? 1 0 right 0 0 that becomes uh Um, that stays the same, but if we do a vector along the y-axis, right, now that's this vector here, 0, m, 0, 1. So this maps the vector 0, 1 onto m1, right? So this distance here, has to be M. <coughs> okay? So then there's uh, two more that I want to talk about, actually three. But one we'll talk about because it's not strictly a linear transformation. Alright? There is the squeeze mapping, right, which Right? So this is a special kind of scaling, right? It's a special kind of scaling in that it's a volume conserving scaling. So we're going to uh, expand by k, shrink by 1 over k, so that the volume is conserved, right? And that's very important in plasticity, right? We know that uh, crystal plasticity or deformation by dislocation slip is a volume conserving operation. So if we want to describe that operation mathematically, we need to make sure that we have a, uh, a form that looks like this. Then, uh, oh yeah, and the last two I wanted to do were projection, right? So you don't think of uh, projection onto an axis, right? So I may have uh, an object here, right? The projection is there, all right? And 
So that's uh, projection onto the y-axis. Let me, since I drew, let me do projection onto the x-axis there. Now, unlike the other transformations I did, this one's not invertible, right? Once you project something, you can't get the original back. You're throwing away the information there. <coughs> um, and then, so you can combine all of these together. Right, but I want you to think about something. If I start with a circle, what is the most extreme shape I can get? Right? So if I start with, if this is my origin, and I have a circle centered on the origin, and I think about all the possible vectors that make up this unit circle, so that's all possible A such that the norm of A is unity. Oops. All possible vectors A. Right? Such that the norm... Uh, let me write that in a simpler way. We can just do for all vectors A such that their norm equals 1. Um, what's the most extreme that we can get? So think about that for a little bit. What shapes? Can I can I go to a square? Can I go from a circle to a square? Is that a linear mapping? What about uh, some weird shape like that? Is that going to be a linear mapping? Um, so just for a little bit. So the astute of you will have noticed that I completely ignored translation, right? Moving my map, moving my object like that. The reason I, uh, we don't really need to consider it is uh, we're, all of our material behavior has to be coordinate frame and different. We don't care what the absolute zero, we don't, we don't have an absolute zero reference frame. We don't have a natural origin in a lot of our systems. Uh, so we don't have a way of defining zero, zero. We, so we can move these axes and however we want, as long as we don't rotate them. Um, and also notice that every single one of these transformations, so let's just make up an arbitrary matrix, A, B, C, D. All right, no matter what values of A, B, C, and D are, if we multiply it by the zero vector, which is the origin in our system, we always get zero, zero out, right? So there's no way to describe a translation and still make it invariant to the, uh, uh, at the origin. So, <coughs> we can do a little trick if you're really, really, uh, um, if I want to describe a translation in two dimensions, I have to use a three-dimensional uh, And now this will translate this to 1 plus x, 1 plus y, 0. All right. So if I add an extra dimension, I can keep my, my invariance at the origin 0. Uh, but really, we can ignore translation. When we talk about linear operations, we're not going to be considering translations. OK? Um, the next lectures will get going with the uh, uh, the actual notes. I just wanted you to think about um, how to interpret uh, matrix equations and tensorial equations. And so, whenever you see a mathematical equation that involves a matrix or a tensor or in indices, I want you to think about what is being mapped to what, um, and that will help you understand the physics.
uh, a lot better. Okay, thanks.